And today I welcome the Commandant of the Coast Guard, Admiral Thad Allen, to discuss the fiscal year 2011 budget request for the Coast Guard. In May, the Commandant will conclude his four-year term as the highest ranking member of the Coast Guard. And he has served this nation with distinction. <laughs> Let the record show that there was applause. <laughs> The importance of our Coast Guard cannot, I say cannot, be overstated. It is the fifth branch of the military, and it is responsible for the safety and the security of our maritime interests and on the high seas. The Coast Guard is also a critical first responder to natural disasters. While the nation watched, while the nation watched, the Coast Guard rescued over 33,000 people in the aftermath of Hurricane Katrina in 2005. This past January, the Coast Guard was the first, the first on the scene to evacuate over 1,000 U.S. citizens from Haiti following the most devastating earthquake ever to strike that country. The Commandant of the Coast Guard has made significant organizational changes intended to improve Coast Guard business practices. In addition, the Commandant has made several changes to improve the management of deep water, the Coast Guard's acquisition program intended to modernize its fleet of ships and planes. These changes, these changes along with legislation that this subcommittee our subcommittee, Senator Th Cochran, initiated in FY 2007 in that Supplemental Appropriations Act. Have st stabilized this previously troubled 
Acquisition Program. Despite these improvements, the Coast Guard is challenged with aging fleets, aging assets, a fragile infrastructure, and workforce shortfalls. And that is why the cuts proposed in the FY 2011 budget are so puzzling, so puzzling to me. The President's budget request for the Coast Guard would cut CUT, cut discretionary funding by $71 million. Now that's not just chicken feed. That's $71 million. And would reduce military strength by 1,112 billets. 1,112 billets. B I L L E T S. The Coast Guard is the only branch of the military to experience a personnel decrease in the President's budget proposal. In addition, funding for acquisitions would be cut by 10%. The President's request does include important funding or critical acquisitions such as the fifth, the fifth national security cutter and four fast response cutters. But these proposals are overshadowed by plans to decommission five FIVE, five maritime safety and security teams, four high endurance cutters, let me say that again, four high endurance cutters, one medium endurance cutter, four fixed wing aircraft, and five HH-65 helicopters. Now, I'm troubled. I'm troubled. I'm very troubled that at the same time that the Coast Guard faces significant asset gaps in meeting existing mission requirements, the Office of Management and Budget is proposing to decommission existing assets before new assets come online to replace them. Let me say that again. I'm troubled that at the same time that the Coast Guard faces 
significant asset gaps, GAPS, in meeting existing mission requirements. The Office of Management and Budget, OMB, is proposing to decommission existing assets before new assets come online to replace them. Such reductions raise serious concerns to this chairman. Let me say that again for emphasis. Such reductions raise serious concerns to this chairman. You better believe it. The Coast Guard budget appears to be driven by a budget top line rather than by the need to effectively address the need to effectively address the Coast Guard's mission requirements. Now, let me say that once more. The Coast Guard budget appears to be driven by a budget top line rather than by the need to effectively address the Coast Guard's mission requirements. Will the Coast Guard be able to maintain current capability to secure our ports, intercept illegal migrants, interdict drug smugglers, and save lives with this proposed funding plan? Sadly, I say sadly, and I repeat it, sadly, the answer is no. Two letters, the hardest word in the English language, no. The most difficult word. So the answer is no. Putting our citizens who depend on the Coast Guard at risk. We will explore these matters in more detail today. In more detail today. Following Senator Voinovich's opening remarks, we'll hear from Admiral Allen After we hear from the Commandant, each member, each member will be recognized by seniority. We're up to seven minutes for remarks and questions. I now, I now recognize Senator Voinovich for any opening remarks he may wish to make. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, welcome, Admiral Allen. Uh, I might share with the chairman of the committee that my wife, Janet's maiden name was Allen. <laughs> really? <laughs> Say that again. I said my wife's mother's name was Allen. How about that? Yes. <laughs> Janet K. Allen. That's my, my wife. That was my wife's maiden name. <laughs> my wife's mother's name was Allen. You, know, you and I may be kinfolk. We, we may very well be. 
Unfortunately, she went from Alan to Voinovich, so <laughs> she used to be called on first, and now it's all, she's at the end. 